remember, I'm a founding member of the Funky Four. So let's go back. Say it with your chest. E yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So even though you hear about the plus one more, in 1977, the beginning of 78, I helped create the Funky Four. It was my, it was um, KK Rockwell first, and then it was Keith Keith. I was the third member. Now, even though I was the third member, we still had members moving in and out. You know, we had members in the community that, you know, like my daughter's father, you know, he, he was, a, you know, he would get on the mic. You know, that would be a, another girl like Mutti, she would get on the mic. But we formed the Funky Four when Raheem came. So even though I was on the mic, we weren't in the Funky Four yet. When Raheem came from the Furious Five, I was gonna say Raheem from the, from the Furious Five, Five we were we were the original Funky Four. Mm. We were the original Funky Four. Now, the story is, and I didn't know this, is that Raheem at some point wanted to go over to Furious no, the Five. Furious Five, but they weren't yet the Furious Five yet. It was just three of them, you know, and and, Mel and Ness, which is Scorpio, really hadn't got there yet. But now they were trying, right, right. And they were brothers. They were trying to get Raheem to come over because Raheem, he was like a dope MC, but he was also like the first person that would harmonize, you know, on songs. So that mm. was our weapon towards the Furious Four at the time because we used to battle 24 seven in New York. It was always the Furious Four and, and, and the Funky Four battling. Mm. That's what we did. The Cold wasn't even out yet. Okay, these was the two main groups in New York City mm -hmm. that held New York City down and that was always battling. The Furious Five won at Raheem. We had a, 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 a battle one time in the Audubon Ballroom. Whatever happened after that, Raheem was told to leave. I found this out years and years ago. No, for real. I found this out years and years ago, and I was very upset with the other two guys because they didn't inform me as to what was going right. on. And so when it was all said, you know, when Raheem left, because we were really tight, brothers and sisters tight, I left. And when I left, Raheem went over to the to the Furious Four. They became the Furious Five. The 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 D, I mean the the uh, manager Jazzy D asked me to come back. They had had two new members, but those two new members. Jazzy Jeff and Rodney C didn't know that he asked me to come back. So when he asked me to come back, they were furious because they were the newly formed Funky Four. But Jazzy D wanted me to come back. I came back and that's when I became the plus one. Mm. And so mm. within two months that I came back, we had our first record deal, the first authentic. So when you asked me, yes, I heard about Sequence and I heard about other people. You, we're talking two different things. You're talking authenticity of hip hop in the Bronx, on the street of New York City, in them park jams, in them schoolyards, in them centers. There's a difference. You're talking 1979 when records were made. I'm talking cassette tapes before 1979. Mm. That's the difference. Mm. Straight. And I bear witness grassroots. to that because I never heard no sequence on no damn tapes back in the well, days. Well, they're from South Carolina. Well, there you go. And it just seemed like one day they was on a rap record. And, well, you know, you, at that time, not to cut you yeah, off, but right. at that time, you know, we would take almost anything. Like, like I'm going to be honest, I wasn't happy with the Sugar Hill style of replaying samples. Mm -hmm. Like, as a fan of the tapes. Right. Once the record started coming out, I didn't understand why they didn't just use, why they didn't cut up the records that I'm hearing on the tapes. I don't know about publishing and mechanical royalties and all that at the time. I'm just thinking, how come it don't sound like the tapes? Because she didn't understand what was going on in the streets. She heard, she heard people rapping, and I'm talking about Sylvia Robinson. And she right. On the, she heard people rapping at the clubs. She heard people rapping at the clubs to good times. She wasn't in those streets to see what was going on in the streets. So she never got that part of what was going on in the streets. When she heard, you know, whoever she did at Harlem were rapping, then she had a metaphor. Listen, I, I could do this. I could put this on the record. So she, she never got that part. She never got 